Kylie and I am a student in the MMSC course here at the Maths Institute. And I'm Chloe and I'm on the same course. Um, so this course is kind of half theory and half practice. Um, so we do applied maths, loads of different, we have loads of different modules about it and it's quite free to pick whatever you want um, from biomass to more physics-y fluid modules. Um, and then also core modules about numerical analysis and that kind of stuff. And there's also a lot of computing. It's just like, as you said, like really um, open to what your interests are. And like also the Mass Institute is just pretty cool. Yeah. It's the Andrew Wiles <laughs> building. Um, I saw him the other day. Did you actually? I saw Andrew Wiles the other cool. day in the corridor. Yeah. In the, in the applied side? It was no downstairs. I think so. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of free coffee. We've got the common room. The caffeine is just needed here. Um, we've got our workspaces, and it's quite like a close course, which is really nice. Like um, the fact that we have this room, uh, and there's like 25 of us, it just means that everything's a lot more like teamwork based and like trying to teach each other things, which is is really good. This is a shell, because it's thin in one dimension, only one dimension, more or less. And the idea is that certain shells can snap, and, well, this is a subtly snap, and so the way you do it is you just snap it around your arm. Um, but um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a variety of instabilities get, that can be observed in shells, and the way you trigger them may not only be using force or load, as I'm doing with my fingers, but some of them can be spontaneous, so they might have some internal activity. These instabilities are caused by the geometry, so this is a flat blade, but there's also curved shells, and they also undergo instabilities, and it's caused by the material, by the um, properties of the material. Some materials are stiffer in certain dimensions and, and, and less in other dimensions, and so all of this um, causes instabilities and so I'm in particularly studying the viscoelastic effects. So some of these shells snap, but sometimes they don't return to their original uh, uh, configuration because there's some viscoelastic effects where basically um, the material behaves a bit like a fluid. And so it is initially elastic, uh, but if you leave it there, it sort of flows and, and, and sort of remains what it is. Um, and so I'm studying how this affects the stability of shells and some of them will not snap anymore and some of them will snap but will take a long, lot longer to snap back in their original position. So I'm Dylan Farmer. I'm uh, the Director of Complexity Economics at the Institute for New Economic Thinking as well as at being in the Mathematical Institute. And I do Complexity Economics, which is economics based on understanding behavior as the primitive and uh, rather than utility. So we do a lot of simulation. So we simulate what are called agent-based models where uh, simulated agents make choices and then interact with each other through the economy. I'm, I'm doing a lot of things looking at climate change where we're doing a lot of data analysis. Uh, financial markets, we're simulating the stock market, uh, trying to actually simulate the S&P 500 uh, and uh, an idea of market ecology, uh, and um, uh, we're building a macroeconomic model that looks at how countries um, uh, trade with each other and, and fundamentals of what drives economic change. Well, I'm really trying to uh, do something good for the world. Uh, our work on climate change, for example, we've looked at the, the green energy transition and shown one of the things we do is forecast technological change and costs, and we argue that renewables are likely to get very cheap, cheaper, making energy cheaper than it's ever been, and therefore being a net economic benefit. We'll make a profit as a result of doing this so that it's not a burden, it's actually an opportunity. So I'm hoping that can help reframe the climate debate and, and accelerate climate change by uh, a bandwagon effect where people realize this is something that's worth doing for its own sake. My name is Kate Twin Tijou and um, I am in Oxford Numerical Analysis Group. So what I specialize is in non-convex optimization. And to be more specific, I do like tensor methods and higher order methods for optimization.
what we are trying to do with our research is that, um, you know, like for gradient method and Newton method, that's our first order and second order method, those are very commonly used. And what we're looking at is we're trying to get higher order information from the function and use tensor methods for approximation. Uh, why is it good? Because um, of uh, several reasons. Uh, like firstly, like it has better rate of convergence and also uh, we, this method can be used a lot in machine learning and it can be more um, less sensitive to parameter tuning. In my work, I will spend maybe like 60% of, of, of my time doing very theoretical things like proof and complexities, complexity bond. And yeah, so I really enjoy this like theoretical element of it. And there's also some percentage of my work is trying to like run numerical experiment. So um, sometimes it is frustrating to see like your code, which uh, you worked so hard for, and like it is not as fast as some of the state of the art code. But but if you try it many times, and if there's one time or at the moment, like you can actually beat some of the state of art um, code in terms of accuracy or in terms of CPU time, that's like, that's like a really fulfilling moment.